I didn't get anything. Unless it's old. Not unless it's something recently. Um, you know, it may be. Maybe because I asked him if, if I needed to bring you all copies, and he said no, that he had already taken care of that. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure of the document. I think there was a backup on one of the courts. I didn't get that. I didn't study that. What I went there this morning. And I've been asking that time, and I've been asking for more ways to send it. That's fine. Okay. We can. And I apologize. I had planned to have you copies. So that is the one new request on the capital equipment, the 12000 Do you want to start you want there? To, you want to speak to that? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start there, Judge. On the JCM? Do you want me to start at the very beginning? The capital on the equipment is increased because we're asking for a, a position. Okay. Okay. So precinct one and through four, we're requesting the commissioner's court to approve the JPs to hire two juvenile case managers. One to be shared by JP1 and JP3, and one to be shared by JP2 and JP4. The primary function for the juvenile case manager is school cases. The ultimate goal is for the court is to get the students back in school, having regular attendance, and pursuing the goal of being passed to the next level in graduation. A juvenile case manager is a valuable tool to the justice courts in juvenile cases. The Code of Criminal Procedures allows Justice courts or courts on approval of the commissioner's court to employ a juvenile case manager to provide services in cases involving juvenile offenders according to the court's statutory powers or referred to the court by the school administrator or designee for misconduct that would otherwise be within the court's statutory powers prior to the case being filed. So they can actually do interventions. The Code of Criminal Procedure also allows for the juvenile case manager to assist the court in administering the court's juvenile dockets and in supervising its court orders in juvenile cases. A juvenile case manager employed under this section of the statute must work primarily on failure to attend schools and parents contributing to non-attendant cases. Also, a juvenile case manager may provide prevention services to a child considered at risk of entering the justice system and intervention services to juvenile engaged in misconduct before the cases are filed, excluding traffic cases. The commissioner's court shall adopt reasonable rules for the justice, I'm sorry, the juvenile case managers that provide a code of ethics and enforcement of that code, appropriate educational pre-service and in-service training standards, training and requirements of chapter 45.056 of the Code of Criminal Procedures, local programs and services, and detecting and preventing abuse. The judge who is assigned to the cases shall consult with the juvenile case managers who is supervising the case regarding the child's home environment, the child's, the child's developmental, psychological, and educational status, previous interactions with the justice system, and any sanctions available to the court that would be in the best interest of the child. The caseload of the juvenile case managers is of primary concern. In approving a juvenile case manager position, it is important to look at the caseload or potential caseload. In 2013, JP2 had a caseload of approximately 959 cases, and in 2014 so far, approximately 626 cases. JP1 in 2013 had approximately 956 cases, and 354 so far in 2014. These numbers include the parents and the child. Both must be considered because of the criminal code of procedures the juvenile case manager is to work on fail to attend and parents contributing to non-attendance. It is because of the sheer numbers of the cases plus the fact that they will work on other types of juvenile offices, offenses when not doing school cases that we are asking for two juvenile case managers. In order to pay for the juvenile case managers, the legislation has authorized several options available to the commissioner's court. One is the, avail the availability of the county to keep $1 of the $2 court cost already being collected on criminal cases. The next is the avail availability of the county to charge an additional $5 court cost on criminal cases for a juvenile case manager fund. And finally, a local government entity may request funds from the Juvenile Justice Division of the government's office for providing truancy prevention and intervention services. 
in 2013, based on the number of criminal cases adjudicated in all four JP courts, the amount of money to the county based on the $1 and $5 fee would be approximately $38,688. In the budgets of JP1 and JP2, we are asking for one juvenile case manager each at a starting salary of $36,000. This equates to $51,741.60 when the benefits are figured in. The salary was arrived at after talking to the juvenile probation and seeing where they start their people at with a certain set of requirements for hire. Also because of the training for the two positions is identical. The figure would be $103,483.20 for two juvenile case managers. We increased the office supplies by $2,000 for training and education, $2,000 for each JP1 and 2. Office furniture, filing cabinets, and others increased. We're asking for $5,000 for JP2, $1,000 for JP1, because I do have a desk and I do have a chair. Also an increase in the cell phone budget of $480. At this current time, there is available space in the Santa Fe building on the fourth floor at the east, the southeast end of the fourth floor. There is an office still that's, that's empty. We didn't budget for any transportation. Most of their job is going to be out in the field. Um, they'd very seldom actually be in their office because they're doing home visits. They're, they're talking to the children, they're talking to the parents, and they'll be at the schools. We didn't budget anything for the transportation, allowing the commissioners to either furnish them a car or give them a gas allowance for their personal cars. We would prefer that you provide them with the car as it would, we're talking extensive mileage. Uh, question, um, you went through the, the amount of cases that both JP1 and JP2 uh, heard in the last, last year and up to this point, but you didn't give any figures for JP3 or JP4. JP4 does not do any truancy, but they do do juvenile cases. Um, they have MIPs, um, we're talking non-traffic. So there's tobacco, there's MIPs, all alcohol charges. So there is a um, fail to ID by a minor, um, DUI by a minor, uh, attempt to purchase alcohol by a minor, purchase alcohol by a minor, uh, false ID by a minor. All of these are alcohol charges and there's six charges that are under the alcohol code. It applies to all of those, and he does get those cases. I, I don't know how many of those. Tobacco charges, disorderly conducts, it's all for all of those. It's, it's just not for traffic. Would it be fair to say that JP1 and JP2 were certainly overloaded as far as the truancy and the, uh, uh, those type of cases that are heard in Potter County? We don't have any control of what's filed. Somebody. And Dave, we've had this discussion. If somebody comes in with a case, we have to accept it. We can't say you need to take it to another court and make it fair. I understand. But I guess, I guess what I'm uh, referring to is that uh, it seems like JP1 and 2 would have enough to probably keep that uh, juvenile uh, counselor, uh, how you were? Juvenile case about, manager. Uh, busy, but JP3 and 4 may not as much. That's what... I'm one of the larger courts, JP3 would be smaller on that, and that's why we were connecting there. And then JP2 and 4 are in the same building, and one has the majority of the, nearly 90% of the juvenile cases, and then the other court gets a few juvenile cases. That's why we're talking about sharing, the bigger and the smaller and the bigger and the smaller. I don't know of any counties that share a juvenile case manager. I would, I personally would like to see your uh, your verbiage as far as the presentation you were presenting to the court. I'll go get uh, copies of this. Um, like I said, I talked to Gary this morning and he told me he had provided copies. And so I, of course I told him he was great and he rocked, thank you, but it turns out it, I don't know where they went. I but I, I will walk down and get you copies right now. I have not. Okay. Uh, give you copies of this because what I read was was pretty extensive. Okay. Um, any comments from the court? I would uh, 
but I, I would have to uh, kind of review that before even entertaining that right now. We're in definite need of a case manager, but I think with the numbers of cases that we have, we would overwhelm one and they wouldn't be able to do due diligence to the cases and to the families and the children. I think certainly um, an advocacy system that you're referring to is certainly needed. And I just feel I know that there's been some discussion going on from uh, at least two members of the court in respect to that very topic. And I think that was uh, engineered uh, some six or months or so ago. Uh, with uh, certainly county attorney and auditor too, that uh, we've been discussing some things. So, uh, but personally, I, I, again, I would like to, to see what you have as far as the uh, your presentation. I'll go get copies right now. And as we uh, uh, look and, and uh, discern this more uh, prudent than we have in just the um, uh, reciting of uh, reciting of uh, what you have with you right now. That's my, my thought. Do we have any other the questions on The we have before us does not include this. Sorry. The position is not included in, oh, I'm sorry, the position's not included in the budget. Is that correct? Right? The you? position is not, but some of the other expenses are the increase in salaries, uh, half of a vehicle for each court, and the office setup is included. And travel, there's several the lines. Travel. Education. Um, right. I would say we need uh, to net those out and take them out reflective of the right. position not being in there um, is where we are today. Is that fair? I definitely want to speak for the court. Then I can, I, do you want me to break that down? I, I think mean, what you have is fine. I, I think that's what Commissioner Bond is requesting. But in terms of the line items of what we're seeing in front of us, the allocations that um, kind of include this position, if the position's not included in the existing proposed, I would suggest we have the line items reflected to also kind of not. So there would be some reimbursement? There would be some reimbursement? Is that what you're doing? Well, we would be collecting court costs, yes. Uh, and From the state, yes. From the state. Okay, and that would be, uh, how much would that offset oh, the county? With what, with the cases yes. of what we had just this last year, it was 38,000. Um, Six eighty eight. It was yes. Thirty eight thousand six eighty eight. Thirty eight thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars. And Commissioner, one thing that I would add, uh, Commissioner Vaughn and I, uh, based are on two thousand thirteen. I'm sorry. I was just saying based on two thousand thirteen. Uh, Commissioner Vaughn and I are, are very aware of this conversation and the kind of statistics that we've seen, the trend, uh, the increase from the core, and, and I would say that we're certainly a partner in that conversation. Some of the phases that we're looking at in the immediate future, we are attempting to pull in uh, the AISD leadership, the superintendent, to just to make sure we're all kind of thinking outside the box and making sure all entities are really involved in that conversation. So I know we obviously have our Potter County lens on, but it is a bigger picture for this conversation. We have also contacted PRPC, uh, as referred by the uh, governor's office, I have personally made a call to the governor's office, the individual who is in charge of allocating those grant dollars on a particular grant that is available. We would not be, even if we applied next year, because we, we are not in the current cycle, we would not see those dollars until potentially 2016, 2017. So just to piggyback off of a comment you mentioned earlier, Commissioner Vaughn, uh, we're, we're not there yet. And we're definitely trying to look at all the avenues that are available for the county um, and really trying to think through what those trends might look like, at least. I think, that's, I think that's right. And uh, again, I want to reinstate, we know the issue, the problems are here. But we want to make sure that how we address those issues are pertinent and proper to the issues that are ongoing. And, uh, and I'm not saying that you have broached out there, because uh, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a noble idea, but from what I've heard, I don't think it captures the, uh, the, the essence of, of, of the problems with the degree of the, the two positions that uh, uh, 
your listing. And I think that's a little bit deeper uh, concerns that uh, we would feel that we need to address. And that's why we reached out and trying to bring in more entities that have a, a vested interest in these conditions, and especially with our. With I don't our guess people. I understand. What do you mean a vested interest? AISD. So How does the AISD interest. have a vested interest? They would want to make sure their kids stay in school. Sure, they do. They get paid for it. The vested interest is to keep the child in the school. It is. Yes. And that's what a juvenile case manager would also assist in doing. And I don't think we're dismissing that no. need. I think what we're saying is where we are today in that stage, and, and both we you and, sure and Judge Buskis have been involved in that communication, is we're trying to really plan uh, cohesively throughout the community, and then we know this is not an issue for just Potter County. They, they would have the same concern that we're seeing. And so maybe that partnership looks different in the future, and maybe that is a partnership even financially from AISD in Potter County, you know, and, and I think that's the intent, but. Absolutely. Okay. And I think the more that we bring into this conversation, again, that do have a certain interest with our young people, uh, I think the better that we will prepare and have this set up as we move forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't believe that we're right at that juncture right at this point in time. Okay. okay. I did ask in the budget for a salary amendment. All of the salary allocations um, were netted out. Is that right, Carrie? It is. From what the judge proposed to the court. Okay. But, uh, Judge, also, I would like a, a copy. I am. I'm going to yeah, go make copies right now. Okay. Absolutely. I'll go get them right now. Okay. Anything else? Do you have any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, yeah. yeah, Can I ask a question just kind of on the side and kind of for the clarification of that? I mean, I just want to make sure I understand the status of where we are with the case manager. Are you guys saying one, two, it's hard for me to hear back here, or none for right now? I think that uh, what I'm saying is from, from my perspective, I would like to see what they're presenting first. And uh, uh, basically, to, to have a chance to glean through what they uh, what the, the judge has our judge Horn has already stated to us, but given the magnitude of, of this issue and concern in our county, I think we would uh, it'd be more prudent for us to little bit, to dig a little bit deeper and have a conversation with all those parties and entities that we've uh, reached out to. Okay. Okay, so right now, so it's not out. Oh, absolutely not. I don't think so. But I would say the proposal, in terms of being, you know, obviously very transparent about the process, the proposal as it sits today does not include any of the positions. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that was the direct question, but I wanted to speak to that as well. What? Yes. <clears throat> and the, re the reason I ask the question is that without the tool of the general case manager, I'm having a hard time kind of thinking what role that conversation is what shape that conversation to take going forward as far as the courts go. But that's, but if the door is still open, that's good. Yeah, I, I would, yeah, I would, I would certainly say the, the door of the conversation of the position and what that might look like is very much still open. But in terms of this fiscal conversation and what we're talking about, um, I think that's been netted out. So, okay. okay. But I would absolutely, Dave, I would still speak to that. So the problem we're trying to solve is that there's too many truancy cases. I say the problem we're trying to solve is that there are too many truancy cases. So what, what's the problem? The problem is legislation has only allowed us to do so much. No matter what we do, it has no teeth in it. We can order them to school, we can't enforce it. We can hold them in contempt, we can lock them up. Juvenile detention will take them for 24 hours. And we let them out and they don't go to school. We're done, there's nothing else we can do. A juvenile case manager will go to their home, it will look, evaluate, see the needs. Maybe one of them is being abused, maybe they're so indigent, there's programs, they'll get them in programs, maybe the child's on drugs. We can't go to home, we can't get involved with them at all. 
We can't have any conversations about their personal life. We don't have that jurisdiction. A juvenile case manager will get involved with these families, find out what their needs are, what it is it's going to take to get these children in school, get them educated. Because as it is now, again, there's nothing we can do. Yeah, and they would report back to the court. They okay. report back to the court. Somebody, they're accountable. But you're limited to what you can do by law. We can hardly do nothing. Correct. We have no And, and the school does everything. The, the, there's proper steps that the school has to take before they can file the cases in our right. court. Right. Okay. So the authority to do more enforcement is granted to these case management people by well, There's nothing more they can do either. I mean, all we can do is order them to go. We still can't make them go. Yeah, and you brought but up the juvenile case manager can go find out where they're hanging out and say, "Get in the in car, the let's go." Yeah, but where do they get that authority? I don't know. I mean, I, by who? Legislation gave it to them, not us. Right. Yeah. Herein lies why we we want to very methodically go through all of these the issues, the concerns that you brought up, and certainly they are on point. This is exactly where we need to address. We need to advocate for them, but we also need to make sure that all of the interested parties that have this vested interest for our young people are part of this, this process as we move forward. And I, uh, to the degree that your presentation is, is put forward, it just doesn't cover it in the totality from what I'm hearing. And I think that's what we want to make sure as a court, if we're going to broach out there we want to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed to the best of our ability. And, and certainly uh, working with you as far as the courts and ensuring that these concerns, because absolutely, they are, we, we have to interdict and get to them prior to actually ever, ever coming to you. And, uh, oh, and a case manager would be able to, to, to intervene before the cases are filed with the court. Right. That would be something that they would be able to do. They don't have to wait until they come to court to do something. Right. They can they can intervene before the cases are filed. Yeah. But once the school has gone through the whole process, the law does say that they shall file with the court. Okay, so the school has no choice either. And we they have no have choice to but to take it. And up. we have no the school uh, the law says the court shall accept the cases. Uh, David, are these going to be? like law enforcement individuals or what is, what is I think there? that one of the requirements that we're looking at is that they they have the same uh, background as a uh, juvenile probation officer. Uh, can I, if I can, please, from what I've, when I've read, just kind of a helpful uh, uh, explanation of kind of how, well, how I see these guys working is uh, the best analogy I can think of is it's kind of like the drug courts that the district courts are running right now you know the case is in the court but they've got they've got kind of super kind of super intensive probation they're working with the uh, the clients and then they come back to court and report report periodically to the judge and that's that's kind of the way I understand the case manager works so it's sort of like a it's kind of like a probation officer type situation but but so that the case is in the JP court but they kind of work with the the, the case manager kind of works with the kid on an extra le extra basis outside of the courtroom and, and kind of helps keep them on the straight and narrow a little bit more. So that, that's kind of the way I think about it all. Well, I guess I, I'm looking at it like this. I'm a parent of one of these kids that just uh, hates to go to school. You come to my house and knock on my door and someone to talk to you about your kid. I said, well, I don't want to talk to you about your kid. Get out of here. What, what's going to happen then? Well, then he's done what he should have done. He did, he did the intervention, he went. So nothing's going to be done. No, there will be a case filed. Yeah. And they'll be ordered yeah. to school and That's they'll it. probably be fine. That route and they can come see us in court. But the case manager has done what he was supposed to do. He went to the home visit. So. All those points, again, are spot on. But I think that we just need to sit down and kind of go over all of these things. So well, I mean, I know it's a huge step. Spaces. And but putting everybody into the conversation and how we perceived it to be is that we would have a similar of reaching out and having a, a round table, if you would, of all of those subject matter experts who would to bring forward to the table and make sure that when we uh, come out with a particular program, that it's going to be beneficial, 
not only to the county, the school districts, but also to those, uh, those students and those parents. I would like to say that these numbers that are here don't reflect how many times we see that child. Some of these kids we see six, seven, and eight times because they don't go. We pull them back in for show cause, tell them again, you must go, you must go. They don't go, we pull them back in. So even though those numbers are saying that we had 900 cases, that's not how many cases we had, that's how many new cases were filed. Some of these kids we see over and over I see some of them eight, nine, ten times. I can appreciate that. And I think we're going that direction, but again, I just like- I'm gonna go get you copies of this right now. Okay. Thank you. Yep, I think we're okay. ready to keep moving. Anything else? Um, if we can, yeah, I don't, uh, precinct, I'm just, I'm just checking the line items here. There's no changes here, is that right, Carrie? You've netted everything back. Correct. How much? Uh, non What's that? Let's uh let's see if we can get a few more from there. Can I ask a quick question to Judge Bosquez on the um, non-capital, if I'm following correct, non-capital 1500 to replace the old cabinets, current ones over 20 years old. Uh, would, were there new cabinets that were provided when you moved back into the courthouse or you took what was originally with you? I, I'm sorry. We did some, but we did get all of them. We did get some that were replaced, but they weren't all replaced. Okay. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, that's it. Okay. <coughs> you want to go through the JP once? You want to take yes, a break? Yes, that's all we got. Yeah. <coughs> there you go. Uh, the DPS expense on three, is that a new line item? We have budgeted it for many years. I believe last year was the first year we had not budgeted it in many years. And of course, this year they did come up and, and request an item. Uh, I believe they wanted maybe push bars on a couple of their vehicles that we normally would have provided for them. So uh, Judge Jackson asked to have that put back in his budget. And, and they're what bars? I'm sorry. Push bars. Push bars? Yeah. I'm not sure if that's correct. On their doors? No, on, on, the, on the front of the vehicle. But I'm probably not saying oh. the right thing. Do you know what Cow I'm catcher. talking about? <laughs> it's just a push bumper if that's what you're talking yeah. about. I don't know what. On the vehicles? Mm -hmm. on, yeah. On two. two we push the yes. car and it doesn't cause any damage or something. Like that. So or D and this would go on DPS? Mm-hmm. Versus a non-capital request? Correct, because we don't ever know what they may need. Um, I'm trying to think. Seems like we've purchased a radar for them before or uh, maybe some sort of a radio. And the reason we do that for them is because they do write the majority of the tickets that bring in the fine money out at JP3. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> They don't get state budget to cover that? Yeah, that's interesting. Not always. What is your thought on that? By request or the, the most just a, is, is it selective and I'm not sure. Well, and we're buying it for the DPS. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So he can get his own. He can get his own, is what Commissioner Kelly has said. <laughs> Why should we buy it? It's a state deal. Huh? It's a state deal. States don't have a thousand bucks. We let them use our facility too. They use our facility as well, Commissioner. <laughs> I think they're out there. Time for them to chip in. Well, and 
I didn't. Y'all get to mine. I'm going to ask you to put them on mine. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about it. It has been on the auditor's listserv a lot lately about uh, how many counties provide staff for DPS officers or DPS offices. And there are a lot of counties that actually provide secretarial staff for DPS officers. So compared to some other counties, we provide very little. <laughs> And that's because they are the ones writing the ticket in that precinct that then generates revenue back into that fund? I'm not sure that that's why, but uh, it is a fact. No, I don't. What is y'all's thought on that? I, I guess we'll start buying their ammunition, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, maybe we can trade. You want to take it out or leave it in? I'm taking it out as far as I'm concerned. the case. Support you, Commissioner. Okay. I have I didn't realize candles were doing that. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to set a precedent, let's be sure if we're not. <laughs> I think we just did. <laughs> um, I don't believe there were any changes on JP4. Want to take a break? Is that what you were wanting to do? Or? I was trying to figure out where we were in the whole scheme of trying to finish up. I know the judge wants to maybe depart at five. I was looking at six. I would agree with six. No, five. Six. Five. Six. six. Five. Got I'd two go fives six. and two sixes. I guess I'm happy to You've got three sixes, break. Commissioner. <laughs> um, Is it that or come back? No changes to mine. Well, I think we can do that. <laughs> Let me let you know also that uh, we're going to reconvene at 0800 tomorrow morning and uh, get started earlier so we can push forward. But uh, I was trying to see if we can get as much done today because you've been very uh, patient and, uh, to the department. So let's finish up with uh, Essentially, no changes for jury. Okay. Sure wish you quit sending me letters. You what? I'm sorry? What did you say? Said I wish Caroline quit sending me letters. Caroline, Commissioner Church wants you to quit sending him letters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it somehow. Uh, the jury board, 4,000 increase. $500 increase. 500 increase. The group of citizens, let me think what it is, that uh, sit on the grand jury. They do, well, it's not the grand jury commission. Is that a commission? Oh, that's the bailiff for the bailiffs, isn't it? Well, no, this is uh, if we have to provide a meal for the jurors. Oh, that's right. Okay. And I believe, I believe the coffee and And, and those such donuts, the, and those donuts that Randall room. wants me to provide are going up. <laughs> and that's what that is. What is that? So that's going up $500. <laughs> I wanted to get rid of the donuts a few years ago, and Randall asked me not to. They're so. $500 in donuts? Yeah, every, every uh, grand jury. I don't know. I uh -huh. think. Grand jury, there's only 12 people on there. <laughs> yeah, every week. But then it goes so up. Four weeks. When they get through, it goes up to the DA's office. Like Randall is here donuts. too. That's you want like forty-eight jurors for five hundred donuts or something like that? <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Somebody else. I think it's not only that; it's also uh, lunches or dinners if they're uh, landing over, uh, extending for the regular jury panels. So the thirty-five hundred should be able to cover that. The, the, okay. the entirety of that expenditure is for meals, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, for jury board. Mm -hmm. 3500 So what? I mean, $3,500 is fine with me. Let's not quibble over $500. So. It's perfect. All right, well, I think it's 500 we'll, we'll put it back to 3500 What else? Anything else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that was all. Okay. 
Okay. Well, can you go up to see what that 5,167, what the, um, what is that column, Carrie J? Oh, actual for 2012. We did spend more than that then, okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. County attorney is the next department. Okay. The non capital item, is there anything there, Carrie? Yeah, I think there is. I believe there's one tablet in non-capital, and that will be partially reimbursed by our CPS grant. CPS grant will partially. Um, so the Windows tablet, is that a replacement, or is that a new? No, it would be new. It's for our CPS lawyer for use in court, as well as her, uh, her paralegal, to, as the judge is spelling out all the orders and such that he wants. Uh, so that document can be prepared and presumably printed, perhaps even in court, so that those parties who are sometimes very difficult to locate can be, so their signatures can be obtained on site. Uh, in other words, to make more efficient uh, the execution of orders in CPS cases. And, and CPS will partially reimburse that. Correct. Not a half, is it, do we, is it a half reimbursement or is it? I believe it works I'd out to about. go back and look at the contract. I'm, I'm, I believe it works out to about 30%. I believe that's right. Us back. Um, and Jason, from an IT perspective, you know, we, I think we've certainly seen an increase in the purchase of tablets. The big ones that initially started were the iPads, I think, and the JP courts, if I remember right, a couple years ago. Is there, um, a county opinion from an IT perspective in terms of this type of tablet we should be purchasing that is equivalent with our other technology or, or really kind of mold into that? Not really because the tablets nowadays, they act just like the little boxes. Right. The, the tablet is just a way to get to your labor. Mm -hmm. okay? It's not like the old days where if you, know, you had a, a laptop that was you know, all spec'd out and did these certain things. Tablets, your, your iPad, your phones nowadays, it's just a way to get to your desktop. And so it's, it's, it's really a matter of personal preference. Yeah. What, what color are you for? And what's a typical price range for the tablets that we have purchased? Six, six to eight hundred. Six to eight hundred, okay. And I, I, will, I can say I'm aware that the reason a Windows was requested in this case is because it will run the software that runs the same stuff, that looks the same as what the CPS lawyer is running on her desktop. So it's same programs, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Right. Well, and I don't think mu not much else has changed on here. Is that right? Tried so, not to. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just a little on the auto mileage and car expense. Right. And that's just I, what I tried to do if I asked for any increase, it was I tried to make it based on the trending numbers that we'd seen. Okay. And we've had a couple of, of uh, issues with auto uh, maintenance. So, uh, uh, and, and that was built into the costs that we'd seen uh, develop over the last few years. So that's where that came from. And that would um, also, that comment would also complement the equipment, vehicle, and repair and maintenance, unless that's a running total that that includes. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. District Attorney is next. You may want to hold that then. Yeah. Yeah, I know one of his line items in particular close to a half a million. On, uh, so we may need to come back to his. Pass it over to tomorrow. Bill Bond administration, this is uh, designated funds. Yeah. Nothing there.
I did request an increase on our court appointed attorneys just from uh, where we are year to date. Um, all right. Interpreter fees, I think we can reduce a little bit there again based on year to date. <clears throat> I think everything else is basically the same. Okay. All right. And eject. Yes. Not much right. has changed there. Right. The only thing there is the salary. Okay. And forensics. The increase in talk. Toxicology. Toxicology services. <clears throat> who would who would speak to the reason for that increase, Karen? It's actually the JPs who would order autopsies or blood tissue samples, and I believe part of the reason that there's an increase is because they may start doing just more tissue samples instead of an entire autopsy, but you would certainly need a JP's uh, input on that. Okay. okay. Let's just uh, yeah. pass it over to the board. What's the contract services at the uh, cremation? No, that's a... Uh, Any okay. other questions yep. there? Okay. Uh, Constable One did call me and tell me that he was not going to be available until Wednesday if you had any questions on his budget. Carry on the uniforms. I'm trying to remember because I did. I saw really disparities in the amounts. I thought we tried um, the new constables that came in last year. They they had a little bit of a higher budget, mm -hmm. and the existing constables. I would think at this point everybody's at the existing level. I would expect to see all those line items pretty equal. But I saw really disparities on the constables. Sheriff, do all of your deputies have uh, ballistic helmets? Have <coughs> what? Do all of your deputies have ballistic helmets? No. Okay. Can you uh, tell me what this is all about? Do you know anything about them? What's being requested is a tactical vest with ballistic helmet from Constable One. The only ones that we have outfitted with the helmets would be any of our warrant execution team. But uh, I don't know why they would ask for that. Okay, well. I, mean, I don't know if it is. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what to about. Okay. Uh, anybody's got one. And uh, as far as the vest is concerned, does he, did he not already have a vest? I thought he got one last year. Several. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. A couple got one, some last year. I couldn't remember which. I thought we outfitted everybody with uh, last year that, that, that did not have a vest. That's my thinking. Mm -hmm. I thought we did. Maybe a mistake. The That's what I was thinking. Well, did that say a tactical vest? vest so? mm -hmm. Can you go back on that? Which one is it? Constable one. And he was asking for a tactical vest. Is that different than just a regular bulletproof yes. vest? It's going to be. A, it, it would take rifle rounds versus the handgun rounds and that kind of stuff. So it's a lot, lot thicker vest. How many of your guys have those? Our tactical team. Just, just the tactical team, right? Yes. Okay. No one's with the helmet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to take the vest? Yes. I, yeah. I do know that on the vest itself, just the body armor, I know Lieutenant Giles has put out a deal about uh, trying to get a deal through the federal government, but only one of them, one of the constables have actually put in for that. Uh, I say when the regular deputies and the regular law enforcement officers get those as part of their uniform, then I think about go ahead and doing that, but not at this moment. 
Commissioner Kelly suggesting to remove that from the non capital equipment. That's the 2500. That's the 2500. Um, the other requests I don't think are included in there in the budget. The subscriptions um, 1700 moved to 2700. Which one was that? Uh, I'm sorry, on Constable One still. But that includes air cards for their new software and then their Accurant, uh, which is why they had the increase this year. Would any of that roll into the IT software? He al also, CopSync, which I know we purchased all the constables that application. <coughs> How do we handle air cards across the county? Do they get allocated per department? Yes. They do? Yeah. And what about the cop sink? That's the, the, just the support is already in my budget. It is? Yes. And the Accu, I don't know. Accurant. Accurant. Is that Accurant. a program? It's a, a search program, I believe, where they can look up uh, addresses and I don't know what it's all kind a, of information. It's a, a vehicle, person, search, you know, query that you can uh, enter in to locate people or, or find that information. So how did, Sheriff, how do you budget for that? Is that in the software move that has now happened or is that in a separate line item? It's a separate line. I mean, we do it in our, in our regular line. It's not anything that we send over to him. It, it's not a... It's actually a... It's like a service. Yeah. It's a service. It's an internet service. To because I see varying amounts um, on constables about, I think Constable 3 said 3,000, and then there's included ne Lexus, Nexus, CopSync, AirCard, and then it looks like maybe T-Close. T T so I'm not, I'm struggling with why those amounts are different, because what we knew last year was they all had the same platform. The, the action is, is based on how often you use it, is what they charge on. How what, I'm sorry, sure. How often, how often do you use it? Yes, ma'am. So our, our investigators back, our four investigators are the ones, and our warrants guys are usually the ones that use it the most. The Lexus Nexus, uh, you know, that could be anywhere from the, the penal code books to, I mean, we, that's where we get our penal code books from, plus it, our law library is through Lexus Nexus, so I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not sure what, the, what they have. There. And that technology fund, um, Carrie, that the JPs utilize, mm -hmm. may not be calling it the right fund, um, are the constables also allowed to use that fund? No, it's just for JP for JPs. Of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. At least to my knowledge. And the uniforms were budgeted at a thousand last year. I don't know if there's a reason we think they need to be up to fifteen hundred. I'd just like to hear an explanation on, on all of this, all of these requests. I'd like to hear an explanation for them on, uh, for all of these requests that they have. Okay. So should we net them out? Hold it over till Wednesday. Until yeah, I mean, it's uh, some of the stuff. I, I go back to the sheriff and, and, and our regular police department, and do they have these same uh, programs? Lexus, Nexus, do you have that? And well, I'm, tell you, I'm talking about your, uh, your officers out in the field. No, I mean, like I said, it's, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to say because I don't know what, what they're using that for. That's what I, that's what I want an explanation from them. To find you know, out what I mean, is, it, is it to buy their books that are fixing to come out or that they've come out? I, I, I don't know. Because we buy them like our penal code books from Lexus Nexus. Yeah. It's, it, but it, it comes out at the end of the legislative session with all the new Karen, law books. Can you know, new law 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 so it's hard to say yeah. what they're using that for. I, I mean, yes. I, 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 it's hard for me to answer that question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Commissioner, um, Commissioner, we'll just hold it over till uh, they return. I think one yeah. of them is going to be a Wednesday, so we'll just hold it over to Wednesday morning. Do you think we'll still be going Wednesday morning? <laughs> no. But with well, we're done tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> you think it'll be up to tomorrow? Uh, I'm not sure if any of the other constables may be, may be present um, to at least answer. I think one, two, and four wanted to present theirs together. I don't know about Constable 3. Are they in? Okay. 
we'll see if they're available tomorrow. <laughs> So I just said one would not be available until Wednesday. Right, I believe he's out of town. Which, which one is he on? Daryl Works. Oh, Commissioner Watt. Uh, I mean, Constable Watt. Constable Watt, okay. yes. Okay. All right. Okay. On uh, Constable 4, he also asked for an office chair and a armor, American body armor, an extreme... Uh, ABA extreme vest. I'm not sure if that's in there still. What's your opinion on those? The vest in particular. I don't know what happened to the other vest. Let's just let's just pass all the cost uh, till okay. tomorrow. That, I, I just to comment that would be like the regular body armor, and the only thing that Lieutenant Giles needed was a policy showing that they have a policy that they wear that and they would have been eligible for, for the, the reimbursement thing that he's looking at trying to get for us and constable for it. Has that been provided? The, the, only one, the only one that provided anything was constable three. Because there's a reimbursement potential? I mean, we sent that out to all of them just, uh, and it's not a guarantee that we'll get it, but, but it, at least it's a process. Yeah. Okay, um, sheriff's next up. Yes. Uh, who's out to be sheriff? Fire department. Fire and rescue. Okay. Uh, we had six o'clock on the table. And we had five o'clock on the table. Let's let's hit the happy medium and do five thirty. Okay. Maybe we'll All right. All right. Let's, just, let's get the uh, sheriff right now. I think what you guys are looking at is a lot different than what we're looking at, so I'll wait for you and go from there, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> you have questions? Well, the capital equipment is always an interesting conversation, so let's start there. <laughs> okay. I don't work. I like when I get laughs from the audience. <laughs> uh, the cell phone allowance is for our three uh, crime scene investigators or crime scene technicians that go out and process scenes, they're on call. Uh, they rotate days to, for being on call, um, go out and process the scenes and those kind of things. So that's that's what we're asking for there. Those are new requests, Sheriff? Yes, ma'am. We have they've, they've always done it, but we're asking to reimburse them for their their time on their on their cell phones that they get called in the middle of the night. Um, a quick question. How many other employees do you currently have on a cell phone allowance? Oh, I don't know. I have to go back and see. And I might have missed um, the positions that you said those apply it's to. Our, it's our crime scene investigator. Yeah. Only show you have three coming out of the. Uh, only show three currently coming out of your law enforcement budget. Oh, There's only three more. currently. Should be more now. And we've got all our CID guys on. CID, all of our patrol sergeants have it. But some of those are coming out of some special funds, I believe. Mm, okay. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I can go back and look. Right. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think there may be a spreadsheet down in the shared drive. <laughs> and that's fine. We can uh, um, we can keep moving. Staffing. Yep, they are. How many are there? Why do we have? Oh, 
three, I think, were actual phones. The three. That I was counting was actual phones. Yeah. Fifteen coming out of our regular deal. Uh, six coming out of court security, courthouse security, and then I've got six coming out of our forfeited asset. <coughs> Want to go back to the Capitol? <laughs> the uh, second one there, the or are you? Is there anything else on that? I'm sorry. I don't want to. Um, the hybrid card. That well, I didn't know if you're through oh, the I'm cell sorry. phone. The hybrid card fleet fuel system is the fuel system that is out at the barn, where everybody fuels up at, mainly us and but facilities and everybody else who has a gas card. It's at its life's end. Um, the software is no longer available, as we all have uh, endeavored. It's not broke. Um, there is a company here that can fix it. The problem with it being fixed is that there's a two-week two week window. There's no more parts being made, so they're having to cabbage parts, all the stuff they have, and bringing in and fixing it. And like the sheriff said, it's, it's reached its end of life, and, and when it goes out, it goes down, the likelihood of being able to repair it in the near future, in addition to a lack of training, because they're not training people on that same equipment anymore, that the likely that's gonna, we're gonna be at, if it ever fails, we'll be out of service for an extended period. The, the only reason why we're putting this on there is, is not to replace it at this point. We're kind of under the assumption, let's wait until it dies um, at this point. The point is, is to have that money there to be able to come back in and replace it because once it goes down, we'll only have, I mean, we're looking at a two week window there where we won't be able to pump gas out of there and track the fuel out of that uh, area there at the barn. And I'm not sure if we, if it's the same one, same system out at Road and Bridge. Did y'all look at that? I don't know if y'all have the same boy. Yeah, so different system out there. So. But it's just one of those things that we've got to get it. We're going to have to have it replaced eventually because when it dies, it, we're, there's no there's no other parts left for it. And do you think it would be fair, Sheriff? As we, um, I'm thinking of our strategic planning. I keep kind of keep going back to that only because really all the property is kind of being evaluated. Do you think that it would be fair to hold off on this this year? Um, until we really have a better scope, a framework around what our property might look like. Well, and, and I'm fine with that. Like I said, I mean, it, I mean, it may it may not go out till a year from now, sure. or it may go out tomorrow. That's the only. That's my only issue. Yeah, is and we I'm, just we have no idea when it when it's going to go. Yeah, and I think that's I think that's fair. I think we all we the, want is the emergency plan there in case I call you tomorrow and go, okay, it's broke, it's gone. We have no way to get fuel. Yeah, and a, and a couple of those, okay, it, hap it happened. Several of those so, happened this year. I, I'm right. thinking of our contingency fund no, that we have on reserves. And, that, so. and that's why we're saying we just want you to be aware of it. Sure. Maybe set it aside somewhere or whatever. Or if we come back and say, oops, if we come back and say, hey, man, this thing is it's dead in the water. Okay, okay is there a, another got area replace. of funding for this in case, in case there is a, 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 an emergency? Yeah. It could come from your contingency or possibly your equipment repair and replacement account. That's the only reason why we've put it on. Okay. Okay. So it's not Making anything that we have to do right now. We just want you to be aware of okay. Okay. the tasers and the holsters. Uh, again, unfortunately, with technology, the ones that we carry now are no longer available and that technology is going away. So to get new ones and they have a shelf or they have a life expectancy of five years. So it's time to start replacing those. Um, we put 15 in, in our budget. We also have some that are in our JAG grant to replace as well. Um, total replacement of, I don't remember, what is, 
30. 30 of them that we've got to replace. So we kind of split the difference between the two. Okay.